Good news in the legal arena. The company Johnson & Johnson has been ordered to pay half a billion dollars in order to compensate the victims of the opioid crisis in the United States that has killed tens of thousands of Americans. This ruling definitely does show that the law, or at least the courts, do agree that the pharmaceutical companies had a very large hand in creating the crisis. The order to pay $572 million comes from an Oklahoma judge in the case that has been closely watched to see if a court would hold the drug maker responsible for its contribution to the American crisis. It marks the first major blow for the pharmaceutical industry on the issue as it faces numerous lawsuits across the country, from states and municipalities torn apart by the impact of the potent drugs. Now, Judge Thad Balkman of Oklahoma did find that the burden of proof in proving that the opioid crisis was not like just cause, but at least the pharmaceutical companies had a very large hand in creating the crisis. The, the, the burden of proof has been met and feels that they did prove that the pharmaceutical company was responsible for the damage that had been done. They created a public nuisance by spreading misinformation about the painkillers. In other words, what the courts are really saying is that the drug manufacturers misrepresented how dangerous the drug actually was. At least that's the ruling in this particular case. Bulkman stated specifically defendants caused an opioid crisis that's evidenced by increased rates of addiction, overdose deaths, and neonatal abstinence syndrome. He described the opioid crisis as an imminent danger and menace. Now, Johnson & Johnson has announced they plan on appealing the decision and going for much less than the penalties originally sought for by the state of Oklahoma. This half a billion dollars is actually much less than what was being sought for the damage that has been carried out against the country. Now, the verdict obviously set back the company's stock price, but it did go back up to some degree once it was announced that they would be appealing the decision to a higher court. But let's think about this. It's $572 million for 702,000 drug-related deaths. 702,000 deaths. That's about $815 a life. If my math is correct, that's about what it is. Now, the lawsuits don't end there. They don't end with Johnson & Johnson. Uh, Pardue Pharma, who are the creators of Oxycontin. Now, the owners are known as the Sackler family, and they're offering to settle more than 2,000 lawsuits against the company for 10 to $12 billion. So they're willing to settle in, in the tune of, you know, you know more the, the 10 or more billion dollars. And the potential deal is part of a confidential conversation that was discussed by Pardue's lawyers at a meeting in Cleveland last Tuesday. In other words, they wanted this done very quietly. Okay, they're admitting that they're wrong. They know they will lose in court, particularly with this new ruling. And they kind of just want to give some kind of compensation to make everything go away very quietly. But I think it's very important that we not let them do that and let everyone know that they have been held accountable and found to be liable for what has happened with the opioid crisis. Now, this was... Uh, released to the public by at least two people that were familiar with the mediation that was going on. The lawsuits that Pardue and the Sacklers are seeking to settle allege that their company's sales practices were deceptive and at least partially responsible for the opioid crisis, which claimed more than 400,000 lives from 1999 to 2017, according to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Some of the lawsuits also allege that after 2007, the Sackler family drained the company of money to enrich themselves. Now, while this seems like a lot of money to be able to, to pay out to try to repair some of the damage that has been caused by the opioid crisis, which is possibly one of the most evil things that has ever existed in terms of drugs since, say, the opium wars uh, with regards to, you know, tr intentionally getting Chinese people addicted to opium and then selling it to them. Now, the opioid crisis in the United States is expected to have cost more than a Five hundred billion dollars. Half a trillion dollars in damage has been done to the United States as a result of the opioid crisis. And what they're offering in return is about 10 or 12 billion. 
So let's just let's just to put everything in pr perspective, the amount of damage done compared to the amount of uh, money that's being put out to try to re repair that damage. Now, a 2017 report by the White House Council of Economic Advisors said that Pardue earned Pardue Pharma earned more than 35 billion from the sale of oxycotton. So what do we see here? The profits from Oxycontin were $35 billion. The damage was $500 billion. This is a prime example of the irrationality of capitalism. But isn't, isn't capitalism supposed to do the most profitable thing? Isn't it supposed to do the most economically rational thing? How rational is it? For someone to put $35 billion into their pocket and cost other people half a trillion. Think about that. But this is okay according to the logic of free market, uh, uh, marketeers. And that's perfectly okay in their mind. This is what capitalism does. This is what the market decided. Well, people could just choose not to use opioids even though they were misled and are addicted now. But here's the thing that particularly bothers me about this situation. The court ruled that the drug manufacturer lied and got people addicted to painkillers, profit off of that, destroyed hundreds of thousands of lives. Not one person is going to jail. Not one person is going to prison. This was done deliberately. This massive addiction crisis was created for profit. Not one person is going to go to jail. You walk down the damn street with one joint in your pocket, and you're going to prison. And you didn't even hurt anybody. They can, cause, they can kill hundreds of thousands of people, cause half a trillion dollars in damage, and they're going to pay, like this stipend out of their pocket for that. Think about that. I mean, we can go to this whole huge thing about the war on drugs and how this whole situation is so completely messed up that you can have people whose only crime was getting high and eating a bag of potato chips and they go to prison for years. And some people were doing 20 years because they were convicted three times of owning a joint. 20 years in prison for a joint. Murder almost half a million people. Nothing. Just some cash out of their pocket. And every one of those billionaires is going to be just fine. They're still, they're still going to be living lavish lives of luxury, even if you took all $35 billion away from them. That, my friends, is the logic of capital. Thank you for watching. If you like this program, then please head over to my Patreon page and set up a monthly donation. It's your donations that keep this program running. Also, if you would like, please rate, comment, subscribe, and share in various social media.